Good evening, Grayscale. How are you tonight? What's up, Mick? <laughs> What's up, Purrs? Well, thank all you guys for dropping in. I didn't expect the crowd on YouTube tonight. Being Sunday night. I figured I was just going to sit here and paint to myself and talk like there was somebody listening. <laughs> but as long as word gets out and we help somebody with their paint, that's all that matters. That's what we're here for. I think I'm going to do something kind of colorful tonight. Because I'm just in a colorful kind of mood. With that said, I'm going to come right over here into some cad yellow. And just tap it right in the brush. Not a whole lot of color, just, just enough to kind of stain it a little bit. I'm going to just... Come up through here. Get some get some color on here. And then pull a little bit down here in case we have water. Just a very little of the yellow ochre. I just want to add some of this yellow ochre in just in a couple places to add a little, just a very little darkness up here. Not much. Just a little. Because yellow ochre is a little bit more golden color than our cad yellow. Then we can come over here and tap into just a little bit of Indian yellow. Just a little. Hadn't cleaned the brush yet. Still using the same brush. We'll bring it down and around the yellow ochre there. We'll take these two colors and just kind of stain the water with them a little bit. You know something, Grayscale? I'm glad you asked that. I, I do apologize. I should have said that. I'm using a 16 by 20 canvas tonight. And the canvas is turned on landscape. And it is already covered in a thin, even coat of liquid white. And the colors I'm using are titanium white. I've got a bunch of colors out. Don't know if I'll use them all or not in this painting. But I'll be painting again tomorrow night. But I got titanium white, thalo blue, Prussian blue, alizarin crimson, mountain mix, dark sienna, Van Dyke brown, sap green, cad yellow, yellow ochre, Indian yellow, and that evil bright red. And I apologize for not uh for not saying that right off. But I am so glad you asked that, Grayscale. I 
So, Mick, what you been up to lately? I'm going to come right over here now, and I'm going to get just a little bit of the dark sienna, and just a touch of the lizard crimson. I just want this dark sienna to have a little, a little redness to it, not much, just, just a little bit. Because when these colors, when they get up here and Go to mix with this liquid white. They're gonna, they're gonna kind of do some, some crazy stuff. So we'll just let it happen. We're gonna paint this guy real loose tonight. I'm not gonna be real tight with it. I'm just gonna kind of throw the colors up here. Then I'm going to come over in just a tad bit of the Prussian blue and the Lizard Crimson together. And I'm just going to let them mix up here on the canvas. I'm not going to try to, I'm not going to try to mix them. I'm just going to let them do their own thing up here. Because there's still a little bit of the dark sienna color. In my brush, so that'll help wear it down in a couple spots. And darken it up in others. Well, I don't know what my problem was, Grayscale. I don't know if I was just excited to get the paint or what, but <laughs> I didn't even mention none of my equipment tonight. I just jumped in with the painting like I was happy to be here, which I am happy to be here. I'm always happy to be here. It's always fun doing something you love. Recommendation on brushes. Uh, well, Purs, as you know, I, I think you know by now, I am a Bob Ross instructor. So if, if I go to recommending anything, it, it's pretty much going to have to be the out of the Bob Ross line. And with that said, uh, The reason for that is their natural bristle. Okay, can uh, on the, and I hope you see what I'm saying right there. They're they're natural bristle brushes. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, they they're natural bristle brushes. And, and they seem to uh, do better than your synthetic brushes with oil paint because oil paint has a different consistency than uh, acrylic. And when you're using a synthetic brush, it tends to leave your paint streaky. And I hope that makes sense, 
what I'm seeing. Okay. <laughs> We're going to clean that brush now since we've just about ran it through every color on the board there. That gave us a, a pretty interesting start for a sky, I'll say that. All right, y'all can't see my palette, but let me show you what I've done here real quick. All right. On my white, I got a bunch of it up top, but I split it up. And down here, I bought down a separate little pile. Now, that way I can use this white with these colors up here if I need to. I can take a little of it and move it in here or wherever. But if I get another color in here, it's not going to stain my, my main white or uh, dirty it up. But you can see I always put my colors down, and that makes it easier for getting the brush in them. Plus, it, if they get a little oily, it, it keeps them from running. And you can hold your canvas. I could, I could sit here with this thing up during this entire painting, and I would never have to worry about this paint running because it's thick. Good, thick paint. That's the key. Oh, I'd, I'd be lost without this thing, Grayscale. I'm telling you, I would be lost without it. I absolutely love it. All right. I'm going to come over here now in that little pile of white that I was showing you at the bottom. And I'm just going to tap my two-inch brush right into the white. And I'm not loading the brush with a tremendous amount of paint. I'm just, you can probably see how much I got in there. It's not a tremendous amount of paint. And I'm gonna come right in here and I just want to start right here in the center. And I just wanna work my way out. And I'm just blending in little extra, because that's all I'm doing. I'm going to try to stay out of that blue for a minute until I get all these other colors kind of kind of blended the way I want them. I'm not going to go up into the into the blue until I probably get on my last uh, little bit of blending. And that's because that's my darkest color and I don't want to contaminate my brush with a real dark color just yet. But I do want a, I do want a light color up here in the sky, right in here. So I'll come back into that area, and I'll just start blending outward again. About like so. Well, thank you, sir. I appreciate that. Let's just hope it keeps looking amazing. <laughs> All right, now I'm going to knock the paint out of this brush. I'm not washing it. All I'm doing is just rubbing it across the paper towel. When I say knock the paint out, that's all I'm doing is just rubbing it right across the paper towel. Then I'm going to come right back up here in my white again, and I'm going to tap about the same amount on it's, it's, it's not a whole lot of paint, as you can see. Then I'm going to come into my water right here, and I'm going to do the same thing down here. And I'm going to start out and just go to working it around. And I'm going to come right down into the crimson color again. And I'm going to start blending it, just like so. And I want to yellow ochre and the yellows to kind of blend with them just a little bit, not like it. 
and I'm gonna stab the blue again for that. <laughs> then we'll pull in, knock a little bit more of this paint out. All right, now this time I'm gonna come right here and I just wanna start lightly blending across the canvas. Long, gentle strokes. And I'm gonna come right up into the blue this time. And just kind of lightly set them in the sky. I don't want to do them with the X strokes because I don't want my color fading. I want it to be. In fact, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll come over here and I'll get just a little bit more of the thalo blue and alizarin color. Just a little bit. It's not going to take a lot for this. Because I just want to come right up here in the corner. And I just want to lightly add little color up here kind of in my corners and let them kind of feather down to where my corners are darker and I'll do that down here in my in the water as well I just want to feather them in I don't want to I don't want to use a lot of pressure right here I just want to loosely and when I say feather them, I'm talking about I'm barely hitting the canvas. And you can see those little those little edges that I'm pulling up. And that's because they're just they're just lightly coming into the into the canvas. Then we'll come over and knock some more of this color out. Then I'll come up here and I just want to lightly blend across the top and get that, get that blue kind of work down in there real lightly. And then I'm going to knock the color out again. I know y'all probably getting sick of hearing that already, but it's a part of this process and it has to be done. About like so. And then I'll just kind of work the blue to where it's not real harsh. And just let it gently fade up into it. All right, now I will wash this brush. Now I'll tell you what, I'm not going to wash it. I don't think I'll have to right now because I think I'll be able to use it again in a second. Right. I'll put it over here for now. Alright, now I'm going to pick me up a number six fan brush. Then I'll come up here and get some of the crimson on my fan brush. And I'm going to come over and get just a little bit, a very little bit, of the Prussian blue. I'm going to mix these colors right here on the brush. More crimson than blue. Now this will cause my color to go uh, to a lavender color. But I want it to be more of a crimson Hey, Rod, how you tonight, man? I want it to be more of a crimson lavender than I do blue. And I'm just loading the brush up with those two colors. That's good to hear, buddy. Glad to hear that. All right, I want to come up here in my sky. And I just want to come up here with a few little, few little circles, about like so. Just about like that. Kind of with a with a dark little cloud there.
and then in some places it'll be it'll be a little darker. What about like that? That's all I'm looking for. Then I'm gonna come right back up here in my crimson again, and then my Prussian blue again. I'm gonna use these same colors. Mix them right on the fan brush. I'm not doing any knife mixing right now. Everything's being mixed right on the brush. And I'm gonna come right over here under this cloud. Just making little circles. And I'm gonna come right in here and pull in a little another little cloud right there. I got to I got to do something right here. I don't like the way that's yeah, there we go. I like that better. Alright, then I want to kind of drain that one out. Alright, now I'll come up here and get just a little bit more of the same colors. I'm still staying more to the uh, crimson side. I know it may be hard for you to tell that, but a couple steps down the road, you'll be able to tell it's got more crimson in it than it does blue. All right, I'll to come over here with a couple little circles now. And I want to make just a little, another little small cloud right here. Not real big yet, just. Little small ones. <clears throat> and maybe a little stringer right across here. And I'm just wiggling the brush here just so I don't have a straight line up here. I just want to kind of Just put a little, a little, little funkiness in it, I guess you could say. A little movement. And I'll do the same about right in here across my light spot. About like so. And then maybe, maybe one right about here. Just a little light one. About like so. <laughs> Alright. Then I'm going to go ahead and wash this fan brush. Now by not putting as much pressure on these that's around that sun, it automatically makes them look like they're a little brighter before you even do anything to it. Uh, because over here, doing these dark ones, when you go to pressing that color into the canvas, it applies more paint. So, hope that makes sense. Right. Now I'm gonna dry this fan brush off real good. All right, I want to take I want to take some white and put it right on my finger, and then I want to come over and get just a little bit of the cad yellow. Now I've got white and cad yellow right on my finger right here. If you can see my finger, this camera needs to be uh, focused in on. Yeah. All right, I'll do that in just a second. All right, I'm gonna take and. Rub these two colors right on my canvas over here. And I do want a little more to the white than I do the yellow. I want the yellow to be in it, but I want it to kind of appear like a, almost like an eggshell color. So I really want you to be able to see the white. 
I'm going to come right in here. And then I want to put just a little bit, a very little bit of Indian yellow right on that same color. Just a little. Right on top of that color. About like so. Then I'm going to come back in that color with just plain white. Just make a little circle up here. About like it. Okay. Let me see if I can adjust this camera somewhere. Yeah, I think that's better right there. All right, now, these colors that we had mixed up here, the alizarin and the uh, blue, I'm going to come back and I'm going to get just a little bit of these colors, same color, and I'm going to come right here where, the, where I left off on these clouds, and I just want to take that fan brush and just bring it across. Right on top of the little sun right there. And then I'll get some more of this. And I'm going to bring this one just across on top of it. Yeah, I agree. It, it did happen a good bit. And, and let that kind of just sit right there on it like so. Oh, yeah, that, that brightened everything up in the purse. I'm looking at it now. Yeah, that definitely helped. Wow. <laughs> All right, I'm going to wash my fan brush again right quick. Come over here now, and I'm gonna pick up my my filbert brush. It's just uh, well, my numbers is wore off, but it's just a filbert brush. Is all it is. And I'm gonna come over here, and I'm gonna get just a little bit of the white. And I'm going to bring it right over to my Indian yellow color. And I just want to mix these colors together right with the, right with the brush. A good bit of white, not as much Indian yellow. I'm looking for a bright sunshine color. And then I'm going to come over here and get just a little bit of the CAD yellow. And bring into it. So I have cad yellow, Indian yellow, and white. And I'm just mixing all these colors right on this filbert brush. That's all I'm doing. All right. Now I'm going to come up to these clouds. Right here, we'll have to do the bottom because our sun's here. So I want to come across the bottom here, and I just want to touch on some color in this cloud across the bottom. Just like so. 
and it's, it's not going to take much color to do this. You just want to touch enough that, that you can see it in your cloud. All right, then I'm going to get a little bit more bubble brush up again. I'm going to come over here to the tip of this one. I don't want to come into this cloud. And I just want to tap some color into it. Back to a certain point here. Maybe a little around the top. Not like so. Oh, and I am knocking some of that lavender color back out of my brush. Before I go back to my colors down here. All right, get just a tad bit more. Then I'm going to come over here to this color. And I'm going to do the same thing. And all I'm doing is just tapping in a couple places up here. I'm not, I'm not adding a ton of color. Just, just a little bit. I'll load my brush up one more time. <coughs> I'll come up here on my big cloud now. I'll come in here and touch it in a few places. Most of the time when you're doing this, Sometimes uh, less is actually more because you don't want to you don't want over highlight because if you do you can kill your clouds you can kill that effect. So you just have to kind of be. Kind of be gentle with it. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to come over here and grab just a little small one inch brush. And I want to come up here into this into the yellow and the, and the lavender together and I just want to take this brush and just just kind of mix this color around. Bob and used to call this hypnotizing so if that's what you want to refer to it as you can but all it is is just tickling this paint that's all it is you just I mean you just very very lightly touching these colors and kind of just married them together up here. And if you have some yellow in places that's brighter than others, well, that's fine. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But the one thing we don't want to do is we don't want it to turn one solid color. We want the colors to stay separate. We just wanted to have some indications that this cloud is being lit up a little by the sun down here. And I can't tell you how light of a touch this is. I can't even describe it. How light of pressure I'm using right here. Right, 
Then I'm going to come in here very lightly. I want to kind of fluff these clouds up just a tiny bit. There again, I am using absolutely no pressure. In fact, I'm almost missing the canvas when I come up through here. Almost missing it. And then very, very lightly come across and just set the set the clouds kind of down in the sky. And really all that does is just knock down any high spots you got up here in your cloud. It just kind of smooths them out, gives them a gives them a real smooth look. And then I'll pull these kind of back and kind of smooth them out. But I'm staying out of my sun. I don't want to I don't want to go into it. About like so. And that should it should do it on the sun. Now one thing you can do, and it's entirely up to you, is you can come back up there with just tiny, tiny bits of white. Let me get this brush washed. I'll show you what that does on one of them. That way you can decide if you want to do yours or not. Uh, I won't do all of mine because it takes a lot of time. But I do. I want to show you what you can do. You can come over here and get you just a little bit of white. And it don't take much white, just a tiny bit. And this is clean white. There's no other color. And take where your clouds kind of make their, like right here on that fluffy part. You can come up here and touch this one side. Just real lightly in here. Like on where the where you think they'd be more rounded. And you can just touch in a little white in just a couple places. And it, it don't take much. Let that let that solid white sit in there with that uh with your other colors. All right. And then clean your Fibber brush off and then come back over the same color up here and just lightly tap it in with the same brush, same colors. Just just come up here and just lightly tap the color in. Just like that. And see it gives that cloud more of a oh, a fluffiness kind of feel to it. I tell you what, I'll go ahead and do it all. It won't take a second to do it. I'm not going to sit here and give you step-by-step -step detail on this. I just did. So, Hey, Bobby, how you doing, man? So I'm just going to come up here and just do these real quick and get it over with. Yeah, it, it makes a it makes a very noticeable difference, uh, Pers. It really does, and it's a good effect. It, it's a it's a real good effect. Sometimes it just uh, if you got a lot of clouds, sometimes it can take. I mean, if you're at home, you know, you don't have to be in a hurry. But, you know, painting like I am tonight, I didn't want to, I didn't want to sit here and take a 30 or 45 minutes just to do, little white spots in the clouds. But if it helps, that's the that's the whole purpose of doing it.
I used to, Bobby. Oh my God, did I used to struggle with love. And I think the one thing that I heard one day about clouds, I don't remember who the painter was now, but I was watching him on TV. And he said the one thing that helped him with clouds was when he figured out he had to paint the clouds as soft as clouds actually are. And I thought, wow. I never thought about that. Mm. I hate having to do stuff over and over and over. But it happens. That's the thing about our, our passion. We want it to look the best we can make it. Acrylic clouds had to be harder. They had to be. Which now I've seen you do some blending with acrylic that blew my mind. But that don't mean it's easy. Yes, it does. It takes time. This is hard to come in here on a painting that you're doing on YouTube, trying to do it, you know, kind of, kind of fast because you don't want people to lose interest. It's kind of hard to, to pay attention to every little detail and keep a retention span to where they'll watch it, you know. Because YouTube's got the analytics that you can go look. And, if, you know, if people get bored, they're gone. And they won't watch a video very long at all. Yeah, painting on camera is different. I will agree with that. But I think the, the exciting thing for me is, is having an audience, somebody that you can interact with. <coughs> I really I enjoy that a lot. What's up, Bubba? Oh, Jeff, how you, man? But you could sit here and, you know, it seems like if you don't have a camera on you and you can sit here for a couple hours and just get lost up in that world, man, you can put some details in a paint that just will blow your mind. But the minute you turn that camera on, <laughs> you realize you look down and you say, oh, my God, I've been on for about an hour and a half already. And you still want to do little things? You got to, you got to find another gear, you know. You got to jump up there and do something you might not be a hundred percent happy with, but you know it'll get you through in a crunch. But I don't want to teach nobody a wrong way of doing something. Yeah, Jeff, that's what we're talking about. It is a totally different world. That's like the little highlights in the clouds, you know. I don't know how you do yours, but you can do it with a filbert brush, you know. And that process right there probably just took me an extra 20, 25 minutes in this painting. And you don't know how people are going to react to that kind of thing. You know, are they going to be thankful that you showed them? Or are they going to get bored with you doing the same thing over and over and leave?
What's up, Zach? You are very, very right, Bobby. I know I don't have a crowd in here right now. It's showing nine people. But I want to—I just want to say that right now, as, as, as I'm sitting here speaking, there is uh, Paint Your Dream World, who is a an amazing acrylic artist. I mean, the man is, he, he's beyond amazing. He, he's unreal. You got Jeff's oil paintings, and Jeff does some landscapes that will just blow your mind, and some seascapes that you can hear the waves hitting the, hitting the bank. And you got grayscale painting in here. Uh, I hope I don't miss anybody. But to see artists come in and watch other artists paint says tons for our community. I mean, it. the art community is, is such, it's, it's a brotherhood. And I, I love it. You pick up the phone and if you got a question about a, a particular method or something, I know it, Paul, and I appreciate that. See, I'd rather have 20 dedicated followers than I had 100,000 part-time followers. Because when you guys, I mean, y'all don't understand how much this support means to us. And we may say it over and over. And you may think, oh, they just saying that. But man, seriously, when when y'all watching us, it is unreal how much we appreciate it. Just got home from a cousin's house. He made a meatloaf on the smoker. Yeah, it's hard to <laughs> it's hard to beat smoked food, man. The algorithm is against us. You can say that again, Bobby. All right, I got some uh, Van Dyke Brown here on my pilot knife. And I'm going to come right up here. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to create a... different kind of mountain today. I'm going to... I'm going to build a... Van Dyke Brown Mountain. Thank you, Zach. I appreciate that. I got a video posted here on my channel. And uh I was gonna I was gonna send Jeff a message today and tell him about it. Uh, it's a video I put on on my YouTube channel. Oh, about three months ago. I think it said three months ago. And uh, I've been having a couple of issues with the mountains. Now, I was making decent mountains at best. And Jeff was making these mountains that just looked like they're ready to jump off the canvas. And I just could not figure out exactly what I was doing that 
had me so out of whack. And I wanted to tell Jeff to go watch that video on my YouTube channel. But I can't remember exactly what painting it was now. But I was uh I was painting a mountain. And <laughs> it uh you just have to be there to understand the uh the humor in it. But anyway, like I was, like I was saying, I called Jeff and I said, Look, love your mountains. Absolutely love them. And I need some help with mine. And he said, okay, well, how can I help you? And I said, well, my mountains look like mountains, but they don't look like the kind of mountains you're making. So Jeff and I got together and uh, I got on the phone and he got on the phone and we was doing a little FaceTime call together. And he went through the basics of making his mountains. And I was so close. I mean, the, the method, and if you'll go back and watch that video from three months ago, the method I was using was so close that there was just a couple of steps that Jeff was doing that I wasn't doing. Now, when I say that, I'm talking about a couple of steps. Made all the difference in the world of Jeff showing me what he was doing. Them two little extra steps made a tremendous amount of difference in my mountains. And I was like, you got to be kidding me. Just that little bit makes that much of a difference. And it did. Because my mountains now, from about a month ago, when, when Jeff and I did this together, my mountains now look totally different to me. They look way better. So what did I learn differently? Uh, what I learned was anybody that's not happy with their mountains, they need to get with Jeff and take a mountain lesson. Now, I won't tell you what he charges. That's his business. But I will tell you this. It's worth it. They did, Jeff. They improved tremendously. But I want you, if, if don't nobody else go watch it, I want you to go watch that video. I may find a link and send it to you. I want you to see just how close I was. And you're going to be like, are you serious? That's all he wasn't doing? <laughs> Which you probably already know what I wasn't doing. So it probably won't surprise you a bit. All right. I'm going to come up here now. Let me quit running my mouth. And I'm going to take this knife. And this is with a lot of pressure right here. A lot of pressure. I'm going to come in here. And I'm going to scrape out as much of this paint as I can. And like I said, this is a lot of pressure. Jeff, that's one thing I'm going to do. I'm going to give credit where it's due. I promise you that, my man, because sometimes I get nervous sitting here in front of in front of the artists that come to watch me paint. Because y'all painting at a different, whole different caliber on some of the stuff y'all do. Yeah, I'm a Bob Ross certified instructor, but, you know, we, uh, we kind of limited to that style if we're going to try to teach. You know, I mean, we even signed paperwork to that effect. So, all right, I'm just coming. 
coming in here. Now, when you get up to your edges, you want to be extra careful because if you come outside them edges, you're going you're gonna to make your mountain grow. He's gonna have that. He's gonna have that breakout, Bobby. It'll happen, and when it does, he's gonna take off like an eagle. All right. Now I'm gonna come up here with this one inch. I'm gonna start pulling this color out. And I'm just pulling this color out and down as close to this edge out here as I can get. And I'm going to keep knocking the paint off my brush. Yeah, I hope he does too, Bobby. Just like I hope you remember us when you get famous. I told my wife how many of y'all said happy birthday last night. I said I can't tell you everybody because there were so many people that said it. I said, but Bobby was one of them. And a couple other people that's in every every painting that we do, they said it. And she said to tell y'all thank you. And then I told her that you was uh, running your mouth again. <laughs> uh, oh. I said Bobby was in there talking about you again. All right, we just want to pull that out. And I'm just going to kind of feather the bottom of it. Because we got to come back and blend it out anyway. Oh, wow. I put you to sleep, huh? I don't know if that's a compliment or not. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll go with that. All right, I'm going to grab my knife again. And I'll come right up here to some dark sienna. And I'll pull a little bit of it out. And a tad bit of crimson. Very little bit of crimson, not much at all. And then I'm going to get just a little bit of yellow ochre. And I'm going to bring all these colors together up here. And I'm just going to marble mix them. And I'll put in just a tad bit, I mean a very little bit, of titanium white. And I got these colors marble mixed. In other words, they're mixed real lightly. I don't have them thoroughly mixed. And I got just a tiny, tiny roll of paint. If you can see that on my knife, it is a tiny roll. And I'm going to come right up here and go right up above my outside line here. And just start pulling this color down. Real gently. Now I don't have to be pay a whole lot of attention to detail over here because I'm gonna have a tree in here later, but it's not in there right now. So even if we're gonna do it, we want to do it right. Even if we're gonna cover it up, we don't want to get no bad practice habits, and that's easy to do.
it will come right here. I'm going to start working these colors now. Now this is just very little paint. I'm not using much, much paint at all right now because I'm going to come back with another highlight color here in a little bit and add just a tad bit over it. So I guess if you had to consider this anything right now, you could consider it a, a mid-tone, I guess as you could call it. I guess that would be a good word for it. If you know, if you want to actually put a art term on it, we'll call this our midtone color. <clears throat> but it don't take it don't take much of this color. Just want to add it here and there to where we can see it. And in a couple places we want it a little darker. All right, I'm going to make a little bit more of this color. That's dark sienna. Lizard crimson, a little yellow ochre, and just a bit of titanium white. That's all it is. And I'm just leaving these colors, like I said, marble mixed. Up to this little pink, pull it down just a little, and this one. Now, this one's going to be just a little bit lighter because we're right there at the sun. But now, truth be known, if this was in real life, all of this would probably be in silhouette if you're sitting there looking right at the moon. I mean, the sun like we are but since it's a painting we can, we can kind of get away with this because it's our interpretation of what's happening here and the world says that Artists are kind of kind of different anyway. No, I'm getting quiet, but I'm holding my breath on this, y'all. That's the only reason I'm quiet. Because this is such a light pressure. I don't want to. I don't want to mess it up. Well, they kind of early tonight. Almost looks like a volcano. Hmm, okay. Well, that's not a bad thing. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
up just a little bit. Van Dyke Brown right in here. I want this, I want this to be a little darker in a couple places up here. this color work itself on out down here. Not like so. Alright, I'm going to clean off my knife. I want to come over here. I'm going to bring me a little bit more white down. And I'm going to pick me up just a little bit of my cad yellow and just a little bit of my Indian yellow and bring over here my white. And I'm going to mix these colors together. I'm going to put just a little bit more Indian yellow in it. Kind of get it more to the to the orange tone than the yellow tone. And then I will drop just a speck of red in it. Just a speck of red. Because red will take over everything. Then we'll make me up a little pile over here of Indian yellow, I mean of yellow ochre with just a little bit of Van Dyke Brown in it. Very little bit of Van Dyke Brown. And a little bit of white. I'm going to leave the uh, crimson out this time. So this is just Van Dyke Brown, very little bit of Van Dyke Brown, yellow ochre, and white. And it kind of gives you a gray, uh, kind of a grayish yellow look almost. To me, it's a real pretty gray stone looking color. All right, now I'll take a little bit of that, and I'll come back over here on top of my brown now. And this is going to be my highlight color. And I want this color to be just put on just so lightly in places. I mean, just, I mean, if you can just barely see it in places. That'd be fine too. I don't want it real bright at all. Now this pressure is even lighter than the uh, the pressure I was using a second ago, applying the uh, dark sienna color that we made up. This color is just. It's just acting like a little bit of highlight. And I'm just going over the mid-tone with it. Just, just very, very lightly. I can't even describe to you how, how light a touch this is. I wish I could, but I can't.
It's such a light touch that if you if you're not careful, you're gonna throw your knife in the floor. That's how light of a touch it is. Because you're starting to get quite a buildup of pain up here. So if you don't use a light touch right now, you're going to go to smearing these colors together. And it's going to turn into mud on you. And if you get a muddy mountain, it's going to turn into a landslide. And it's going to come down the hill and wipe out everything under it. And then ain't nobody going to be happy with you. Because you done destroyed homes and villages. And <laughs> then over here, well, we got that tree coming in here. Just need to add a little bit through here, just in places. I like so. Just whatever you do, don't, don't, uh, don't, don't let the paint smear on you. That's that's the to where it's looking like uh, cake frosting. That's the one thing you don't want it to do right here. All right, now I'm picking me up a little of that color we made with the uh, red and the yellow and the Indian yellow and the white. And I want to come right here on these peaks where my sun is. And I'm coming over this paint now with this real bright sunshine color. And I want to add just a little bit of light in there. Where you can see what's happening. It's just lightening this this lightening this area up in here. Just up around the peak. That's, that's all we want it. You know, we don't want it all the way down our mountain. We just want it right in this area where it's mostly exposed to the sun. Because everything up there is not going to be exposed to the sun. Mainly, this area right in here is about all that's, that's really going to get, I guess, a good bit of sunlight, we'll say, is right there where the sun is. And then to give it just a little bit of shadow up here, I'm going to come over here and pick up just a tad bit of Prussian blue. And I'm going to put just a speck of white in it. Just to give it that snow color. And I'm not really going for a snow color. But I just want this blue. To be kind of like a shadow color. And into that blue, I want to add just a tad bit of the crimson into the blue and white color. And I'm just going to do that enough to change the color. I don't, I don't want to, I don't want a lot. I don't want it to really go real lavender color. Of course, it's going to have a little, 
lavender hue to it because when these colors mix, they do that. But with that said, I'm not trying to uh, kill it with that color. I'm going to come right up here now with this little bit of, and I don't want much of this color on here at all. I want just enough that you can see a little bit of shadow back in here. I'm just touching it in, in a few dark places. That's all I'm doing. I do not want much of this color at all. over here I want to come down in here and just kind of touch a couple of little spots just to add just a little bit of shadow down in here I don't want much just a little You can see that blue kind of showing up in places. So don't overdo it. Whatever you do. Just uh, put a little bit of it up here. Because it, you know, it is a shadow color. But I'm going to show you what we're going to do here in a second to kind of tone it down. We're going to come back and we're going to take some Van Dyke Brown now. Straight Van Dyke Brown. And we're going to come into that blue in places. We're just going to lay that Van Dyke Brown over it. And just kind of mix them together with the knife. Real loosely. And that will darken it down a good bit. And it'll leave that, that Van Dyke Brown, a, a, a kind of tone it down some, and then make it look, uh, make it look more like a shadow, because it's it's actually the base color of our mouth. And then when it comes down to the other color. Just take that Van Dyke Brown and just kind of knife mix them together and create you some little cracks and crevices down in there. That's all you got to do. And they'll just, I mean, they'll, they'll form themselves basically. All you got to do is just, just kind of rub the, rub the knife real lightly back and forth. And all these little, all these little crevices and, and other areas will just pop out. They'll just fold. Hey, Coach Abel, how you doing? Now you can take a brush and come back in there and lightly blend some of them areas if you want to. But now if you decide to do that, let me tell you this. You got to use such a light touch with that brush that it'd be hard to tell you did it. All right, then we'll go up here and touch this blue a little. Because like I said, the little bit of blue we want to see is very, very minor blue. We don't want to see much blue at all. Now this blue we put down in here is fine because it kind of mixes with all these other colors. But this blue up here we wanted, we wanted to tone it down a good bit because that blue and that brown kind of, kind of uh, mixes together and grays, grays up a little bit, turns gray. All right, then right in here, 
we'll come in these little dark areas right here. And we'll kind of give ourselves some little rock crevices right in there. And we'll get just a little bit more. Now we're going to come up here behind some of these highlight spots we got up here. And we want to touch just into our highlight color in a couple places with this brown. And give ourselves some, some kind of cuts and crevices up here. And I know this is some, you know, a lot of attention to detail, but if you want a mountain that's going to look really good, sometimes you have to put a lot of detail in them. Because you can come down to where, where these colors meet and just kind of feather out the bottom of them now. A little bit of that brown on your knife. And it don't let your color stop real suddenly like it was doing. It'll just kind of let it fade into the into the side of the mountain. Then you can come back and add you some, some dark in a couple places. Just like that. Then we can come back in here and these where we come behind these little dark spots and give ourselves a few more little ridges in there now. Kind of kind of build them up. Like so. And I think that right there is an effective little mountain. I've held my breath long enough painting this mountain. So thank y'all for joining me. I hope y'all <laughs> hope y'all enjoyed it. Now maybe we can breathe again. Well, thank you guys. I appreciate it. I was so tempted to come over here and put highlights, but and over here, but it just it would have killed the effect. So I, I couldn't do it. I just could not do it. Well, thank you, Bobby. All right, now with a clean, dry brush, I'm going to come up here, and I just want to tap the bottom just real lightly. Well, 
Well, thank you, sir. I appreciate it. All right, real lightly. I just want to tap out the bottom in the same direction that the, that the colors come down. And then very lightly come back up here and just pull these colors up very lightly. In the same direction. Just like so. Let me come through here and just blend out the bottom. I like that. That gives us a little mountain that's sitting there in the sky. Ooh, I'm going to take a break and uh, ask for some questions now. Since I'm a uh, Looking for breath. And remember, as always, questions don't have to be about pain. We can talk about anything in here. But if you want it to be about paint, then that's what it'll be. been painting uh do, 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 six years I will be a Bob Ross instructor four years in December I painted about a year with a with an instructor and then I did about a year in acrylic And acrylic was very tough for me. I did not know how to make acrylic paint blend. And as far as I know, I still don't know how to. I may need to start painting along with some of Bobby's uh, paintings and get a feel for it. Yeah, it, it was tough, Purse. It was it was tough. Acrylic dries real fast, so if you paint slow. It's, it's kind of hard to get a smooth blend on your colors. I 
How long did it take to find the joy of painting? Oh, Paul, I think I found that the first time I ever painted something. If you hadn't heard the story, it's it's kind of an interesting one. It's on my YouTube channel. On the, uh, I did an interview with a young lady named Gabby. I kind of told how I got introduced into painting and stuff. So if you want to check it out, it's on there. In fact, Gabby's done quite a few uh, interviews with a lot of painters. And it's pretty neat how she does it. You know, it gives us a chance to kind of tell a little about ourselves. Granted, there's only so much you can tell in 30 minutes, but you can get the high spots. Well, Purge, you just have to, I mean, the first thing you got to you gotta do is you got to realize it takes a little time. And it looks like you've already realized that. And keep a positive attitude. Because every paint you do, I mean, after even after you feel comfortable with the brushes and the paints, even after that, every paint you do is not going to turn out just right. And you learn with every paint. And it's a process of learning what the paint will do and, and how you have to move a brush to get the paint to do this and how to get it to do that. It, it really is a process. And how to load a brush. and There's just a, there's just a few things that you pick up along the way that, that help you out. I thought there were secrets to it. You know, I always thought, well, what's the secret? Nobody wants to tell you the secret. Well, the only secret I found so far is practice. That's that's basically about the only secret I found is you've got to practice. The more you practice, the more you learn what this does and what that does. And watching other people paint, picking up their techniques and applying them to yourself, making them work for you. All that kind of stuff, just it just helps. Practice and patience, that's it. All right, I got my fan brush up again. I got some Lizard Crimson, Prussian Blue, and now I'm adding just a little bit of sap green in it. And if you don't know, sap green and lizard crimson make a brown color. So if you end up with too much brown, you may have to put a little more green in it to get that to go over to the green flavor zone. But I'm going to come right up here. All right, that's not bad. Okay. And I want to start across here, and I want to keep under this. I want to keep under this uh, mist 
in places. So you can see that it's back here. And I'm just doing some little taffy trees across here. And you, you want to kind of keep your fan brush to a sharp point when you're doing these. Because if it goes to fanning out on you, your trees are going to get wider and they're not going to have a they're not going to have a uh, point to them. So once you reload, come back to the tops of them and just just kind of pull you in some straighter looking trees in some places. Because it's not going to hurt to have darker trees and lighter trees back here. All that'll do is just make it look like sun's in front of sun. The main thing is just keep them straight. And that's hard to do when you're painting at an angle. About like that, that's all you got to do. Then come back on this side. Thank you, Jeff. I appreciate that. I got a message a second ago from Dylan. <laughs> he, uh, well, you probably already know. He's doing some floral stuff today. He sent me a picture of some of his first floral strokes. And uh, he's doing an excellent job. Yeah, I got to lean in these trees over here. Look at me. I got leaning trees. They look like they're about to fall over back in here. All right, let me see if I can fix them. That's a little straighter. See how we left that mist back here? That mist is your separator. All right, now I'm going to grab just a little bit more green and bring it over. And I'm going to leave a lot of the crimson out this time. Hey, Mava, how you doing? Well, thank you very much for dropping in. I appreciate that. I kind of, I kind of surprised myself tonight with a painting. I hadn't really, uh, I hadn't really planned on going live, and uh, I know you do, and I really appreciate that. You have you have always been very supportive, and that means a lot to me. I try to see it as often as I can, but sometimes. Words just don't seem like they're enough. But without you, you guys like you subscribing, I wouldn't be where I'm at right now. 
And uh, I mean, even though I don't have my thousand yet, I'm still I'm still gaining subscribers daily. Uh, my TikTok family came over last night, and uh, they showed out. I picked up ten. I needed three, and uh, I ended up getting ten, so I can breathe a little today. Cause I'm I'm at a point where I gotta have. I gotta have three every day from here to my deadline. So last night brought me a couple of days breathing room. Oh no, don't go to bed crying. I mean, I wasn't trying to make you cry. Go to bed smiling, knowing that you you made somebody's day. That's something to be proud of. Because I'm serious, you guys, you know, not just me, but but anybody that's out here painting on, on these social medias, if it wasn't for you guys, we wouldn't have a reason to be doing this. We'd just be painting to, to blank space. So when y'all come on and interact with us and, and give us support, well, that just... I mean, it just means the world to us. And, and I hate to speak for all these other guys, but I know how they feel because I talk to a lot of them. And most of them try to give back, you know. Like with me, when I get to 900, I'm doing a $90 giveaway. And then when I get to the 1,000, I'm giving that Bob Ross paint set away and $100. And then when I hit 3,000 over on uh, TikTok, I'm giving another painting away. So, you know, it's it's very appreciated. Yeah, you're right, Mabel. It's not. You are right. But sometimes, you know, we just we wonder if the if saying thank you has enough impact. And I really, I really hope it does when I say it because I mean it. I hope it I hope y'all feel it the way I intend it to be felt. Because right now I've got six viewers. But I'm going to sit here and paint this painting just like I got 600 viewers. Because the six people that are watching me right now are, are giving me their time. And it mean, I mean, it just means a lot to me that people give me their time to watch me. Sometimes I think it's just to see how I'm going to mess up next. <laughs> Like right now, you know, I'm maybe fixing to mess up right now. So y'all watch this close. What's up, Steve-O? How you tonight, man? Well, tell the gang I said hello. Well, thank you, Maeve. I really appreciate you dropping in. And you have a great night. Use this to gain telling me Steve said hi tonight. Steve said me the gang said hi. That's a twist. All right, I'm going to come up here and get just a little of this color on my brush now. And I'm just tapping into it real lightly. And I'm going to come right here under this. And I'm going to start pulling down across here. Just want to pull down straight. Just like so. Man, that ain't straight. <laughs> God, I hate painting this thing. All right. Which way am I going to go back to this? Oh, 
When Kel Thomas said, I said hello. All right, let me get a little more color now. Then I'll come right here under these trees and just kind of pull down a spot under them to where it looks like they kind of sticking out a little more up here. About like so. Then we'll clean and dry this brush. Sure, it's pretty good and dry. If not, you're gonna come up here and just wipe that paint away that you just put up here, and we don't want to do that. All right, now I want to real lightly come across here and just pull lightly across, and then I'm gonna come back with the brush standing straight up and just pull through these little tall spots out here make them look like these trees got a little wave motion in them give them a little movement about like that <coughs> then we'll pick up my knife I'm gonna use the big knife And I'm gonna come right up here, get me some Van Dyke Brown, pull it out flat, get me a little roll of paint. I wanna come right under this, right at that line we just made with the brush. I just wanna come up here and kinda, just kinda tap me on a straight line under here. Now I am dragging it across in places because I don't want a perfect straight edge up here. I want it to have some some shape in it like it's coming out in the water in places a little further. Because in my opinion, a straight line across there just don't it, it just don't look natural. So just kind of give it a, and if you want to, you can, you can drop it down in a couple places. And you don't have to drop it down far, you know, just because this is, this is kind of far away. It's across the lake back in there. And, you know, like these trees back here. We may touch them with just a tad bit of highlight, but if we do, it'll be so minimal that you'll just be able to tell that there's a little back there. We don't want a, a tremendous amount of highlight. All right, so what I want to do now is I'm going to grab just a little bit of white and come back up here in this color we was using on the mountain. And I want to put a little more white in it. So it kind of tans it down some, but whitens it up some at the same time. And I want to get just a tiny roll of that. And I want to come back up here. And I just want to touch in a couple of spots back here on this fan bike. And give it just a little bit of highlight. And like I said, it, it don't take it don't take much to to be seen back here. But because it's across the other side, we don't wanna we don't want a whole lot of highlight back here. Just a little bit. 
about like it, it's all we need. All right, now I'm going to take just another little bit of white. And I'm going to bring it over into that blue color that we used the shadow up here. And I want to tone it down a good bit with the white. As a matter of fact, I just want it to be just stained a little bit with the white. I definitely want the white to be the dominant color. But I don't want it all white either. Then I'm going to take just a little bit of my yellow. Not enough that it's going to turn it green. But just enough that it's going to light it up. And if it does go green just a little bit, that's fine too. Because these trees have some green in them. But right here will be our darkest, I mean our lightest spot. And I want to start right here with that lightest spot. And I want to come across here with that with that little water line. And I don't want to I don't want a real bright water line back in here as much. Mm -hmm. over here and if you touch into the brown just a little it'll uh it'll dull it down some but it'll still give you a water line like you're trying to cut through the canvas Just about like so. That's all you need for a water line. All right, then we'll pick us up just a little bit more white and a little bit of yellow, very little. And we'll come out here and we'll just touch us on a couple little, a couple little ripples out here in the water. And it won't take many of these either to be effective, just a couple. And then come back in there with a little bit of white on top of them. And just kind of brighten them up. Not like so. Don't take much at all to be effective out here. Not like it. That's all we need to do. All right, now it's time to have some fun, fun. Okay, I'm going to pick me up. All right, I'm going to move this two inches to the side. I'm going to grab me a one inch. I think it'll do a little better job for me right now. All right, I'm going to come up here in my Van Dyke Brown. I'm going to tap a little of it on the brush. Come over in my Dark Sienna. Into my Mountain Mix. I'm going to come over and get some of my Thalo Blue this time. Not Prussian Blue this time, Thalo Blue. And I'm going to come right up here in my Sap Green. This is just dark colors. That's all it is. Just dark colors. And I'm just tapping them right in the brush. Alright, I'm gonna start. Let's start right, right. Let me see how I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna start right here first. I just wanna come up here, give myself a little indication of a little tree right here. I 
not like so. All right, we'll get a little bit, a little bit more paint. Just tap right in. That's all I'm doing. I'm going to cover out the side of this one. And I'm going to, I'm going to drop down right here with another little tree beside it. Not like so. I'll come back up here and kind of kind of make my center a little darker. All right. Then I'll take just a little bit more and I'll come about right here. I don't want the center a little darker. I'm going to come about right here. About like so. I want this center one to be in front of these, these two. And I'll show you in just a second why and how this, how this illusion will work by doing that. But we got to keep them straight. That's the thing. All right. Sorry about that. That's the chair. That was not me. <laughs> All right. I'm going to come up here and get just a little bit of my Prussian blue. Very little bit. And I'll bring it down in here to my Cad yellow. I'm going to turn this color green. And it's got just a hint of white in it that I got in there earlier. So what I want to do to kill that white is I'm going to come up here and get just a little bit of the Van Dyke brown. And that'll kind of gray this color up some. All right, come over here and get a little bit of the mountain mix. Either one of them darken it down. The mountain mix is actually probably be better. That way to give it that dark green. And that's kind of what we need right now. Because on this little tree back here, Like I said, the highlights we put on back here, we want them to be real subtle. We don't want them to be real bright highlights. But if you're looking at the painting, I guess we want to be able to tell that, that we have got a little highlight color back here. Just not a lot. I want to leave it kind of dark. Not like so. Just tapping a little of the dark green color on there. And that's all it takes. It, it don't it don't take a lot. In fact, you have to just about be looking at this painting in, in a person to see it up close you might be able to see it on the tv screen but i can't see it in my monitor and that's good because i don't want to be able to see it all right then we'll come right up here we'll grab my script liner brush and we'll bring it into the color that i was just using to make the trees And then I'm going to take this color and I'm going to run it through a little bit of this light green color I got over here to the side. Then I'm going to make one, one pass and give myself a 
indication of a little tree trunk back in here. And I'll even add a couple more little trunks here and there. About like so. Come right over here into my ochre. I'm going to come up here into my lizard crimson. I'm going to pick up just a little bit of it. Bring it down here into this yellow ochre. And I'll put just a little bit of cad yellow in it. Not much. Just tap these colors on my, on my little oval brush here. Y'all know how I am by my oval brush. All right, then I'm going to come up here. And I'm going to start highlighting these little trees. And this is a very, very light touch. And you don't want to kill all the dark. And you get about halfway down this tree, you can kind of ease up on your pressure some and start letting it pick up this dark color and just kind of let it fade to dark down here at the bottom. Then I can pick up just a tad bit more of my crimson. Bring it back down here. Now I want to. I want this to be a little bit more to the crimson side this time, so I'm not going to pull as much uh, yellow ochre down. But I'm going to use some cad yellow. So if it tries to go a little to the orange side, don't fight it. Let that happen. All right, I'm going to come right up here now. I'm going to touch the color on this tree. All right, before I do that one, I need to do this one. Because I did say I wanted this tree to be back here in the background, didn't I? I want that middle one to be out in the front. Just let it fade down in the dark. Now I'm going to come over here. I'm going to pick up just a little bit of the white and bring over here in this color. And a little bit more crimson. Because I want this to be a little bit different flavor so it stands out. It's kind of going pink on me, but it's kind of pretty. <laughs> All right, let me get a little bit of the yellow. Try the orange just pink down some, because I don't want it. All right, I just want to bring these these colors over in front of my other two trees there, just to make them look like he's standing out in front of them. Kind of push them back, about like so. And then maybe, maybe push this one back a little bit, about like that. Hey, John, how you doing, man?
Well, thank you, Paul. I appreciate that. If every time you paint one, it's it's your favorite, that means you're only getting better and better. So that's good. All right. Now I'm going to come up here, get me some sap green, bring it over into these other dark colors. Oh, I'm doing good, buddy. I'm doing good tonight. Let me just brush. I'm going to come up here with the corner of this brush. I just want to tap up here. Give myself indication of a couple of bushes. Then I'm going to come out of here. A little grass area. With a couple of bushes on it. And then just, just tap in the dark color. Not like so. And then I'll go ahead and wash that brush. All right, now I'm going to pick up this one inch brush over here that I was using earlier. It's got all these dark colors in it. Give it a quick wash. Bring it right up here. Go through this sap green and yellow color that we had over here. It's got a lot of green in it, remember that. So kind of pull it to the side to where you get some yellow on it too. Come right up here and drop down just a little bit from your tree. And just give yourself the indication of a little bush color in here. And just kind of leave you some dark. You don't ever want to kill all your dark color. Whatever you do. And then you can come across the bottom. Like a little bush or something across the bottom there. You want these colors kind of subtle back here. They don't need to be, you know, they don't need to stand out. But you do want to, you want to be able to see them. And then as you start getting out into your sun here, come over into this orange color with the green still on it. But you're starting to get out into the light here. So kind of use this lighter color green. Just kind of work that in like so. About like that. And you can come back in here and touch just this outside edge of this one a little. Since it could catch a little of the light. And then maybe just touch very lightly in there. But for the most part, you want these colors to stay dark. Hmm. Now we'll grab that two inch brush we was using. Then we'll come back up here into my yellow. It's got all these other colors in it. And I'm just going to tap them right here on the brush. Then we'll come right here down at an angle. And I want to just I want to stay under these little bushes we just made. And not kill all the dark. And just come down and just lightly tap. That's all I'm doing. Just lightly tap.
just pull this down at a little at a little angle across here. That's all we gotta do. All right, then I'm gonna come over here and pick up just a little bit of this sunshine color that we have made up. Then I'm gonna come back in here in a couple of spots and just make it look like the sun's hitting in a few places, just here and there, but not everywhere. We don't want it to hit everywhere. Just about like that. And then we want to come back up here and just kind of blend these colors in now. Just set that set that highlight right down into the into the grass. And that just makes it look like some soft, soft grass that you can just walk in barefooted. All right, now I'll grab a fan brush. And I'm going to come up here and get a little of this color we used to make all this with. I'm going to come down to that little angle across here. I'm going to put in a couple little, couple little sprigs of standing grass. So it don't look all flat. We want to have a little something back here. Not like that. Then we'll clean this brush off a little. Come down here and get a little more of the same color. And just come back and kind of Kind of highlight it in a couple places. Leave a little dark if you can. And worst case scenario, this will just look like a couple of flowers out here. Not like that. And while we're here and we're working in this color, this is a good color to be working in right now because we're going to do something with it. We're going to load up the corner of that same fan brush. We want to come up here now on top of this little land mass we got made across here. And we just want to come in here at random and just touch in a couple places and give ourselves the indication of a few little few little things standing up back here. Some of them can be kind of tall. Some of them can be short. It don't matter. How high you want them is up to you. But just keep in mind, some of them's going to grow in front of the trees. So don't come up here and put every one of them in between the middle of the trees. Because that looks planned. But some of them are going to grow in just the middles. And some of them's gonna grow in front of the tree. And that's what's gonna make them look like little bushes back here. And just bring them right down on top of your little bank back there. And that pulls that pulls some of your straightness away from the eye right in there. And on these back here, just make sure you get enough little highlight that they they stand out. Because you don't want that bank to look plain. Now you can take your fan brush and tap it right down into this little bit of darker green right here. If you want to. And you can come up out of here with just little... Like little stray grass looking things. I 
and that's that's all preference, you know. Just just adding a little a little more uh, oomph, I guess, to your painting. All right, we clean this fan brush. All right, we're about to wrap her up, ladies and gentlemen. I know y'all happy to hear that. I didn't mean to keep y'all all night long over here. On a paint. Hmm. I'm going to come right up here with my one inch brush again. I'm going to come into my Van Dyke Brown. Dark Sienna. Sap Green. Now mix just dark colors. Brush of blue. I just want an array of dark colors. That's all I'm looking for. Tap them right in this one inch brush. Oh, I'm going to come right here. I just want to bring this tree all the way down off the canvas. Just like so. Just like that. And I'll drop that brush into the thinner and come over and pick up my script liner. I'll come over here in the same colors that we made it with. Then I'll come over here into my light color, which is those browns that was together. The dark sienna and white mix that we did our highlights with right there. And I want to come through here. With a light colored trunk. I'm going to put a few limbs in here. Don't know how many of these will show. Don't really care. Because at this point, we know they're in here. We're just going to cover them all up probably. But if we get a couple that show, then that's just a bonus. And who don't love a bonus? <laughs> All right. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to pick up my little oval again. I'm going to bring it over here in the thinner. I'm going to come right here into my yellow. It's got all these other colors in it. It's covered up in greens and ochre and Indian yellow. I mean, it's just an array of colors over here. So I don't know what colors will actually come out of the brush. I really don't. But whatever color does, it should be a pretty color. All right. Come over here and start tapping this color on. And remember, just like always, it's a light, light touch. Make sure your bristles are open. Touch it. Lift off. Don't kill all the darks. All the same things we always mention every time we do this. And like I've told y'all a thousand times, I probably say this to keep myself from doing it. So I would want to remember it. Because it is such an important step. 
because if you kill all the dark in this, you're just going to end up with a big glob of colors back here. It's going to look nothing like a tree at all. And with all these colors we got up here, and them changing like they are, to me that just adds so much character to your tree. Not like so. Have I done put everybody to sleep? Yeah, them colors are starting to come out pretty good over here. It is so pretty when they do that. I love that effect. Let me just keep on. Add my highlights. I see some trunk. Yeah, we left a little bit in it. I always like to do it. That way we know it's there even, you know, even if we kill it all, we got to practice of doing it, so. Not wrong with a little practice. All right, we're going to get some of this bright color now. And come in here and just touch a couple places with this bright color. Like the sun may be hitting it. And there again, it don't it don't ever take much of this to be effective. Just a little bit here and there. Maybe a little bit here on this outside. I'm gonna say that's plenty. disappear not like that all right ladies and gentlemen thank y'all very much for joining me and thank y'all very much for for staying with me as long as you did I really appreciate it uh, I realize this got kind of lengthy I didn't want to I didn't want it to take this long, but I'm happy with the way it turned out. I hope y'all like it. Well, Purse, thank you very much for sticking around to the end. I really appreciate it. And Y'all know that y'all can reach out and catch me on any of my social media platforms if you have any questions. Uh, if you will, put the word out about my YouTube page. Because the more subscribers I get right now, the better. Thank you for stopping in, John. I appreciate it. So if y'all can share the channel and get me my three for the next couple of days, I won't, I won't cry about it. <laughs> Thank you, Paul. You have a great night. God bless you, brother. All right, guys, you know, you know, I love all of you, and God loves you more. But with that said, I'm going to go ahead and sign off tonight, and I will, uh, I'll be back on TikTok tomorrow night live, and uh, I'll put something together over there that. We might can have fun doing. 
I hope anyway. Well, with that said, God bless all of you. I want all of you to have a good night. Now, if you wasn't here tonight and you're catching this on YouTube after it's completed uh, and you're not subscribed to my channel, please help me out by subscribing because my deadline to get my thousands coming up awful fast. And I, that's my goal is to get to a thousand. And I do appreciate it if you can help me out. I really do. With that said, I'm out. Catch y'all next time on Painting with Her.